What's up guys, this week we're talking about Anza Borrego State Park and seven places you can explore there. Let's do it. My first recommendation in Anza Borrego State Park is Fonts Point. Fonts Point is one of the coolest places in all of Southern California. It's this awesome viewpoint that you can drive up to and that looks out over these craggly ridge lines all the way out into the distance. The best time to visit Fonts Point is sunrise because the sun actually comes up over the Salton Sea. To get to Fonts Point, you're gonna need a four-wheel drive car. I wouldn't recommend doing it in a two-wheel drive because it's four miles back and it can get pretty sandy depending on the time of year. My next recommendation is Clark's Dry Lake Bed in the northern part of Anza Borrego State Park. You can drive up to this massive lake bed and actually get out and walk onto it and see all the cracks where the water's evaporated, much like something you would see in Death Valley at the racetrack. The dry lake bed stretches as far as the eye can see, so it's a cool place to explore in the park. Next up, we have Borrego Palm Canyon, which is one of the park's most popular hikes. This is actually the only place in the entire park that you have to pay to get to. It costs $10, but that money goes to help the state park system and to continue to provide for the upkeep they do, especially in Anza Borrego State Park. This trail goes back into the canyon behind the campground and it's about three miles each way. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for bighorn sheep. You'll often see them on this trail. When you get all the way to the back and you see the green palms coming out of the desolate desert, it's a pretty awesome sight to see. Also note there can be a seasonal waterfall, but most of the time the water's pretty stagnant and the sheep just come down and drink from it. Also, I've seen many rattlesnakes on this trail, so watch out for those if you go. My fourth recommendation is the Galetta Meadows Sculptures. The Galetta Meadows Sculptures are about two dozen sculptures that are in the Borrego Springs area and that range from sea serpents and grasshoppers to scorpions and even a jeep. These sculptures are about 15 to 20 feet tall and they're all made out of metal. It's especially impressive when you see some of the animals that have hair and the hair is actually made out of metal as well. Note that Borrego Springs is a dark sky community, so they try to limit light pollution in the area, making this a great place to come for astrophotography, especially with the sculptures in the foreground. My next recommendation is the Slot, which was the first hike I ever did in this park. The Slot is your typical Slot Canyon, something like what you would see in Arizona or Utah, but this is in the heart of the California desert. The trail is accessed by a half mile dirt road. I've done this many times, in a two wheel drive car, just take your time and go slow. When you get to the parking area, you walk down into the canyon and it's about a half mile through the slot. Sometimes it's so narrow you have to go sideways to get through. At the end, you'll see the natural arch bridge, which is the most impressive part of this hike. And then you can turn around and come back out the way that you came. Next up, we have the Arroyo Tapiado Mud Caves in the southern section of Anza Borrego State Park. This extensive mud cave system is one of the largest in the entire world and it's accessed by a seven mile off road that you should not attempt without a four wheel drive car. As you're driving out, be sure to stop at the Hollywood and Vine sign, which is set up on a small hill and which looks like some type of a post-apocalyptic Mad Max thing where Los Angeles is just a desolate wilderness. When you get to the caves, note that the caves are dangerous. You should not go in without a flashlight, without a helmet, bring a friend so that you have someone with you. Don't go in after it's rained as the caves can move around and collapse. All of those types of safety precautions. However, once you start exploring, you'll notice that this is a pretty cool place to check out. There's cracks in the caves that let in light. There's big sections of darkness. You're climbing over dirt and mud. It's a really interesting place to explore. So make sure you take the safety precautions, but that you have fun when you check it out. My last recommendation is something that you might just want to see in this video and in the photos online, and that's the Goat Canyon Trestle. The Goat Canyon Trestle is one of the largest wooden trestles in the entire world, and it connected an extensive desert railway system in the southern part of California. The road to get to this trailhead is another off-roading adventure that I would not do without a four-wheel drive car. We actually even got stuck once and we had a four-wheel drive car on the way out here. When you get to the trailhead, there's no sign, so make sure you have a GPS track or that you take someone who's already been so that you know where to go. Also, bring tons of water and know that you're hiking in the desert, so don't do it in the summertime or when it's really hot. It's not worth it. That being said, when you finally see the trestle, it's an incredible experience. This large wooden bridge connects to the railway system in the middle of the desert. There's nothing else around. It's really cool to see. 
Of course, there are also a lot of other great places to explore like the Calcite Mines, Elephant Trees Trail, and the Wind Caves. Be sure to let me know what your favorite is in the comments. And if you have a suggestion for future lists, leave that in the comments as well. Thanks again guys and check out CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com for more.